Well, hello, Genevieve. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks, Heather. How are you? I'm doing so good. Thank you so much. Um, Well, let's get into it. I've got a letter that comes in from somebody that is looking for relationship and dating advice. They're going through some struggles. So um, let's just dive right in. This person says, every girlfriend I have been with has universally universally moved on light years faster than me. Almost half of my adult male life has been mourning the losses of a girlfriend who left until I eventually I meet the next great love of my life. And I have never uh, and I never seem to have anyone come back or reach out to me. Even this is uh, five girlfriends in my 35 years on this earth. The average length of my relationship is one and a half years or so. One was eight years. Not a single one has come back in touch or reached out, either ghosted, cheated on, and in two cases, the breakup was more normal and discussed and mature. Anyone experience something similar? Um, And and just to kind of clarify, the the starting says, um, the subject line, all my girlfriends have moved on vastly quicker than me. So I had thought initially this letter as reading it, moved on, moved light years faster than me. I thought that meant that they were moving into the relationship faster. But what he's saying is that they're moving on, they're leaving or ghosting or, or all of that and cheating and ghosting. I don't know. So that's, that's a hard situation to invest so much of your time and energy into just to have them move on faster than you after the breakup. Why is he worried about what they're doing after the breakup? You know, (laughs) at the end of the day, if the relationship is over, it's over. You you kind of got to get on with life. And it sounds a bit like he's expecting them to come back. Mm. When he said he was, you know, they, they ghost him, they completely block him off. And, you know, I would encourage him with my coaching hat on Mm. to, actually look at what are the patterns here? Is it that he's going for the same types of women that perhaps don't work with him? Is he going for avoidant people? Is he highly anxious? Right. Does does he make people feel uncomfortable? And is he the one who's trying to fast track the relationship? I mean, there's so, I have so many questions for this guy. If he was sat right here in front of me, I would be digging deep right now. As you know, you know me well enough. And I would be digging deep to understand a lot more. Um, I think he needs to really look at, you know, have, have a little bit of soul searching going on and understand what it is that potentially has gone wrong. Really, he needs to sit down with a coach. Mm -hmm. He really needs someone to unravel and unpick this and understand where his anxieties are coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the question is, is I was a bit confused by the question, but I think the question is, is how can they move on so quickly if they were in love with me? And I'm still sitting here pining, not able to move on as quickly um, with another relationship when when they're moving on. Yeah. So I think if people have cheated on him, he's got to perhaps take some responsibility as to why they've cheated on him. Has mm-hmm. he not given them enough attention? Has Has he been fully invested in the relationship when he's in the relationship? Mm-hmm. Or does he expect you know, the emotions and everything else to come from the partner that he's with. So there's loads of questions. This could go in a million different directions. Absolutely. It really it's not I a one even, hit wonder, is it? <laughs> it's not. And and I have to say, reading through this and the, and again, I, I don't know him. We don't we don't know everything. But here's no. my analysis of this. The messaging of this letter itself is muddled. The consistency of what topic he's on is inconsistent. Even he says um, the really the average length of relationships are a, a year and a half or so, but one was eight years. One was eight years exactly. So you're 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 discrediting. So so my in just the letter itself, I think you're right. We need to really get to the nitty gritty of what it is that you're seeking to find the help that you're looking for Mm. and taking just what we know, just what we know and hypothesizing, right? If this is a reflection of your communication style where it isn't, you know, um, very clear, clear. consistent, concise, Mm. 
you're reflecting in your needs, you're communicating them clearly. I just wonder if there might be a frustration so much from the other party that they feel the need to just walk away. Mm. And the hard part about somebody just walking away is it's not, it's not fair. It's true. It's not fair that somebody you've invested in just walks away and you get to suffer. It's not fair. Um, but sometimes we don't get those questions after answered after somebody is so done, so done. Mm. So I like this self-exploration of really being able to master the skill set of identifying your core human need. What do you need to fill your love bucket? Right. And then also be able to openly share that with a partner and then also ask and identify what her need is in a relationship. And needs are a little bit different than values, right? Yeah. Um, I think that this is something that not a lot of people often will identify themselves before entering into a relationship. And how beautiful is it then when we understand what we need, we're able to give kind of the instruction manual to our partner, right? But only when we know ourselves. But only when we, we know. We, we can't do that until we understand, know, and, 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 and actually you don't know yourself until you're in a relationship. And sure. everyone that you're in a relationship, you will be different with Absolutely. each person. You're never the same person that you were with someone that you were with previously. Right. We evolve, we grow, we learn about doing things differently and taking our learning experiences into the next relationship. Right. So, you know, I think it depends. He, if, if this guy is learning and is understanding what he's doing wrong and really exploring that, then he should be going on an evolution process in mm -hmm. this journey and embracing that. Mm -hmm. But part of me wonders if he's stuck a little bit. And I'm wondering if the eight year relationship was the first relationship that went wrong, that he got burnt with. And then having the shorter relationships after mm. is perhaps there's some unfinished work that needs to be done from the longer relationship that he was in. Yeah. So to, to me, it could of, often be if you've been very damaged and very hurt and you're holding on to that and you've not worked through it, you will go into a, a, a you know, a number of shorter relationships thereafter and you won't be able to maintain a long committed relationship it'll be too hard for you to process that so right. I think it's one of those things where I have so many questions right <laughs> so many but you know, these are all hypotheses that that exactly. you know we're sort of trying to go down different rabbit holes here yeah. <laughs> yeah. to get to different solutions but yeah Someone like him, for me personally, he's he really does need to work through it with with a professional, absolutely, um, and with a dating or relationship coach that can right. sit there and invest some time with him to unravel all of this and give him the confidence and give him the tools to go into a relationship in the right way with the right person and recognizing and attracting the right person into his life. Yeah. And one thing that we do um, offer as an exercise in coaching, which I think if there's one little nugget that we could give him, maybe it's, it's just this exercise. Um, it's hard to go backwards and talk to the person that left you. You're not the odds of you discovering or getting the, 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 what you need to move on from them is, is very minimal. So oftentimes what we'll say, and I know you do this exercise as well is, write a really honest, soul pouring handwritten letter to your ex yeah. asking these questions, exploring what happened. Did yeah. this happen? Did that happen? It felt this way when this happened. I wish that we had this and then you burn it. It's yeah. not a letter that you're going to hand to somebody, no. but you're asking questions that probably other people can't answer for you. Exactly. Right. And share your vulnerabilities within that letter. Absolutely. And the power in that letter is actually reading it aloud three times mm. before you burn it, before you get rid of it, is actually reading it aloud three times. Read it aloud the first time and sit with your emotions. Yeah. See what comes up. It might be that you need to add more to that letter. Right. And then right. read it out aloud again. Yeah. And sit with it. And mm -hmm. often by the third time that you read it out aloud, and this could take 
maybe two, three hours. Mm -hmm. What it does is you're actually clearing the emotion from from your from your heart, from your head, from your body. Right. Um, and I always say, once you've done the burning exercise, go and have a lovely, cold, uh, you know, a cool shower or even a warm, slightly warm bath. Just wash everything away. Yeah. Get f- feel clean. Cleanse yourself from. Right. I mean, I've said to some people who live near near the beach, go for a swim. Mm. <laughs> or if you've got a pool, just just go for a swim. Something magical happens in water when you're when you're letting go and you're releasing. Um, or even if you can just rub some really lovely cream and give yourself a little bit of a massage, there's, there's, there's something about sort of letting go and, you know, just literally shaking, shaking the emotions away from your body. That's, that's cathartic. It's powerful. Um, it sounds a little bit out there, but believe me, it, it, it works wonderfully. It's a very healing process. And I think sometimes we don't do enough healing when we're holding on to trauma, when we're holding on to pain. Yeah. So- and you're right. They're just layering on instead of, I don't know, and, and letting go, <laughs> not letting it go and not starting anew and taking what you've yeah. learned from that previous relationship and sitting in it and allowing your brain to kind of understand you know, where you can improve, what you need to improve, the environment you need to be able to grow and flourish. We oftentimes kind of forget that step. And then we replace, you know, that person with another person and get swept away in it. And inevitably, if you don't do the work, guys, I got to, I got to kind of push pause here. If you don't do the work to cleanse and heal and defunct and all of that and, and get in that bath and wash things away and, and really sit and reflect and then move forward, you're going to accidentally, even the best of us, the most educated, experienced, wise people in the world, if you miss this step, you will repeat the same pattern and pain will be a constant in your life. It's Groundhog so, Day, Heather. It is Groundhog it's totally Day. totally Groundhog. I love that movie too. If you haven't watched yeah. the movie, watch the movie, guys. <laughs> um, it's totally Groundhog Day. It's totally, and it's crazy making too for yourself. So absolutely. You deserve so much better. You deserve oh, so much better. You don't deserve to be mourning and sitting in this, this, this pool of grief for as right. long as you are, you know, you there comes a point where life's too short to keep mm-hmm. holding on to these things and you deserve more. You deserve to invest in yourself and mm-hmm. move on in a positive way. Yeah, absolutely. And oftentimes I will share this as well. It seems this gentleman, he did share his age and in, in his little subject line, He's a little younger. He's over 30. And I will say that if we don't work on this pattern today, trust me when I say Genevieve and I are working with people that are, you know, 10, double 20, that age, <laughs> exactly. That are just now starting to mm-hmm. unwind and heal. So this pattern of behavior is something that you have to stop. You have to stop and you have to stop expecting others to give you the answers that you need to heal. And it needs to be your journey. So I would say that is as much as we can give without actually, you're so right, Genevieve, this is something that we would need this human being in front of us to ask questions and do that exploratory conversation. And kind of like you say, that fact finding exploration to dig, dig in a little bit more, but on the surface, we can at least give them some pieces of advice. But there's some great Places advice in there. So yeah. 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 Great place to start. <laughs> yes. Good place to start. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, You're of course, welcome. anybody that has letters for us, please send them in. We so value your time and commitment to yourself, your growth, your exploration, your curiosity. We love it all. And we celebrate you so, so much. Um, so Genevieve, thank you for your time. And of course, if everybody likes this video, we give lots of really great advice. Genevieve and I love it. So like, subscribe, and of course, visit matchmakingcompany.com to learn more about how we help singles every single day. Thanks so much, Genevieve. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.